Hi everyone and welcome to this third session of our webinar series on the transfer pricing aspects of intercompany loans. My name is Melanie and I'm one of the product owners of the transfer pricing solutions here at Zanders. Um, and presenting with me today is Wouter Mill from Philips, who will introduce himself um, in a couple of minutes. Before we start um, our presentation and our discussion, I just wanted to give you again an overview of the three sessions that we had in this um, series. So the first one was on the 24th of November, given by um, Casimir. Here in that session, he explained the transfer pricing aspects of intercompany loans, and he also gave a live demo of the transfer pricing solution, so the web-based application. Last week then, um, together with Michel, we presented really the SAP TRM integration of the transfer pricing solution, and we also gave a live demo of um, this integration. Today then, I will be um, discussing with Wouter a bit the experience that they have had um, with using the, our transfer pricing models and also our SAP integration at Philips. Before Walter gives a bit more information about Philips and um, their processes at the moment, I just wanted to recap really quickly on our session last week um, on the integration itself, just because we will be talking quite a lot about it a bit later. Um, and I know some of you, of course, uh, weren't able to attend last week. Um, so just to clarify, so we um, built an integration, an SAP TRM cockpit, what we call uh, a transfer pricing cockpit in SAP TRM. And this actually allows an SAP user to start pricing a loan. So they enter a loan in SAP, they put a placeholder uh, for the TPS cockpit. And then within SAP, they go, they go towards that cockpit, they will see the, um, the loan available for them, and they will just be able to click a button price loan. In the background, then, our um, Sanders Inside credit rating and interest rate methodology will be running. And so an arm's length interest rate will be determined and that will be pushed back to SAP. Um, the user will be able to view the built up of the rates, so the different components, and also to make some adjustments if necessary. Once um, a user is satisfied with the rate, he can confirm it. And at that point, it will be pushed back towards the deal in SAP. And in the background, also uh, a transfer pricing report will be generated. And that report can, of course, uh, afterwards serve to share with uh, tax authorities and so forth. Um, Wouter, I think you will now um, give a short presentation on Philips before we go more into a Q&A session. Yeah, hello, everybody. Good, uh, good afternoon. My name is Wouter Mull. I'm working in, uh, at Royal Philips uh, in the Treasury Department and more specifically in the Corporate Finance uh, Department. I guess most of you already know Philips, but I thought it would be good to have a short introduction on the, on the company. So Philips is a company with a sales of about 17.3 uh, billion. Um, we have a global, uh, global footprint. Uh, we were represented in more than uh, 100 countries and we have about uh, 78,000 uh, employees. Um, and I think it's so important to mention that most of the, or about half of the personnel are working in, uh, in R&D and working in software and, uh, and data science. Um, if we then go to the next, uh, next page, um, Philips has in the recent years been transformed towards a health technology company. Uh, we focus on uh, creating innovation and innovative solutions um, yeah, to make uh, the world uh, healthier and more, uh, more sustainable. With our innovations, we focus on um, making better health outcomes, uh, to improve the patient experience and also improve the staff experience and all that uh, combined with lower cost. We do not only have their products for in the hospital for the diagnosis and the treatment, but also um, products for healthy living at uh, at home, also home care so that people can recover at home instead of in the in the hospital. If we then go towards our treasury uh, part for which we are um, discussing it uh, it today, um, we've been using Zanders Inside to support the pricing of our intercompany loans. And that was also the scope of the agreement with uh, with Sanders. To give you a bit of background, um, 
we have around 30 intercompany loan uh, facilities in, uh, in Philips. And for these facilities, we do approximately 150 transactions. So it means 150 times per year, we need to price a loan or a deposit. Um, and our methodology is based on a base rate, so it's LIBOR or Euribor, uh, plus, uh, plus a spread. It will also give you a bit more, uh, more background to see where we are coming from and where we are now. Um, we made um, in the past some manual calculations, uh, mainly quarterly, about the country risk premium, about marginal cost of fund, and also commercial uh, commercial spread. Uh, that was done in Excel files. And these Excel files were loaded, uh, consolidated, and then loading loaded into SAP. Uh, and now with the uh, Zanders inside, we have a tool that determines for us the interest uh, rate and fully calculates that in a more advanced way. So they make use of a credit rating risk assessment. Uh, they also look at the structure of the loan. They do a pricing assessment, then they look at the parent company uh, structure. Um, so in, in addition to the more advanced calculation, it's not only about um, the calculation itself, but also the load makes it easier. As mentioned before, we did it first in Excel and entered it in SAP. And now we have just a button in SAP called price. We push the pricing button and the price comes uh, comes in automatically in, uh, in our SAP system, which made it much more, uh, more easier. Um, and not only that, it's also um, underpinned with a very detailed uh, report to underpin the rate, which we can use uh, to share with our auditors and uh, tax authorities to share the methodology of how we price our interest rates, which is much more advanced than what we had, uh, had in, the, in, the, in the past. And going forward, it's also a benefit um, because we are now fully compliant with OCD, not only at this moment, but also going forward. Because if they would request us to change the methodology of pricing of the loans, Zanders will take care of that in their uh, in their solution. So that's a bit on the on the background. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, before I ask you the questions that uh, I have prepared, maybe so good to know to the audience. So we'll probably won't have time uh, to do a QA and a um, or to take questions from the audience uh, during this webinar as it's quite short. Uh, but please feel free to ask your questions in the chat. If we are able to get to them, uh, we will. And otherwise, we'll follow up with them um, via email afterwards. Um, so sorry for that uh, short interruption, uh, but uh, Wouter, thank you for providing us already an overview of um, the methodology that you had before and the one that you have now. I think that already gave us quite some information on the maybe positives and negatives you had previously. Uh, could you maybe tell us a little bit um, what exactly triggered um, your search for, for finding an automated solution, basically. There were basically two uh, two triggers. On the one hand, we have in our treasury department the strategy uh, to make processes as, as automated and efficient as uh, as possible. So on the one hand, and on the other hand, we saw that the OECD guidelines were uh, were changing. And given the fact that these guidelines were changing, and more focused on a more detailed uh, assessment on how you do your pricing, uh, combined with our um, Yes, a desire to automate the process as much as uh, as possible and make it as simple as possible to uh, to start with it. Um, those two elements come uh, come together and form the trigger for us to look for a uh, solution who can basically solve these two uh, two topics. Mm -hmm. Okay, clear. Um... Maybe also so good to to note. So a, at some point the decision was triggered. A, you decided to to look for a solution. Um, I, I think you also evaluated a couple of vendors. Could you maybe give a high level description of of the process that you went through to uh, to evaluate uh, the solutions? Yeah. So basically, on the triggers that I just uh, just described, we went out to look for a, for a solution. Uh, we first went to the Eurofinance uh, Congress in uh, in Copenhagen. Uh, there we discussed with multiple vendors, say the potential uh, solution, um, yeah, to solve our uh, or to meet our functional uh, functional requirements, both on automation and on uh, on compliance. Uh, based on uh, that functional requirements, we invited a couple of parties to provide us an, uh, a demo in which they could showcase their uh, their solution 
both how it would work from a uh, technical perspective, but also from a uh, user end perspective and also the uh, the automation uh, part. Um, and I think what really stand out for uh, for Zanders is that they were really not only to provide the solution, but also to tailor made it uh, with an SAP integration, which was really outstanding for us to make sure that we could also reach the level of automation that we would like to do uh, based on our treasury journey and our treasury uh, transformation program. Mm -hmm. And you talk a lot about Ed treasury, so uh, automating treasury and so on was also one of the triggers uh, for going for looking for a new solution. What we see sometimes at corporates, um, because of this topic, it's kind of in treasury sphere, but also in the tax sphere. Um, could you maybe elaborate a little bit on how the interaction goes between tax and treasury and what part they took in, in um, yeah, evaluating and so on the proposals? Yes, absolutely. I think um, it's it's for companies in general and also for Philips important to be always compliant with the rules and uh, rules and regulations. And uh, in our setup, uh, our tax department is responsible for the design of the transfer pricing uh, setup in the in the company, and they would also make sure that everything is. Uh, compliant with all the tax uh, tax regulations um, so given that we saw that the OECD guideline was uh, was changing and we received the functional requirements from uh, from the vendors as so on this we had a close interaction with our uh, colleagues of group tax uh, we explained them the calculation logic uh, what would change compared to now uh, what would change um, also in terms of methodology and in and in terms of methodology documentation around it. Um, then they really went through everything in detail and provided their uh, their approval. And then after group tax provided the approval on the methodology, then we as treasury could take it uh, could take it forward, start with the implementation and also bring the automation because treasury is in Philips the department who actually executes uh, and make sure that the administration of the calculation of the rates and also the administration and documentation around it is uh, is done in an efficient and good uh, right way mm -hmm. I, I think that's also and we see a bit of everything at, at clients uh, but i do think what we mostly see is that it's kind of treasury in the driving seat so to say and it's then transfer pricing of or the tax department that that has to agree on the methodology yeah if, if that's maybe a good characterization of of um, how it's working uh, at Philips um, maybe another good one to ask yeah, of course it was an entire process eh? so you had to integrate with your SAP system and not always the most straightforward part could you maybe also elaborate a little bit on what the most challenging parts were on on taking up this integration um, of our solution with your system and maybe also what what the easiest parts were yeah, I think what, what was most challenging for us was to arrange the internal approvals to link the Zanders Insightful towards our SAP uh, system. And to give you a bit of background on that, we had an, uh, relative, an uh, SAP already in place for a number of years. Uh, and we saw that every time uh, there was an add-on on SAP um, and with moving people around, um, it was not really clear what was now standard SAP functionality and what was an add-on and how was the functionality of that add-on. Well, in uh, to think around five years ago, Philips started to change their SAP uh, environment and upgraded toward a new uh, system and also drove their standardization. And, and with that standardization, a lot of those add-ons were uh, removed, uh, which made us SAP landscape much more simple and also much easier to handle. But um, in order to create new functionality in SAP, our IT department needed to provide the approval. And given that Treasury is a relatively small department in the company, and also the pricing of the loans is a relatively small um, yeah, functionality in, uh, in SAP, uh, we really needed to convince uh, our IT department that it would be a good investment to, uh, to make this, uh, this automation. And in the end, we got it approved, given the fact that uh, Zanders really created the functionality and also really had an, um, an 
interface what just was a plug-in on our uh, our uh, system so that all the intelligence was in Zanders and they also maintain uh, maintain that um, and with uh, with that compared with the level of automation that it brought to us we arranged our uh, approval and were able to uh, to execute it and I think that was also the part which was the most easy part of the process after all the approvals were uh, were in place uh, and we were able to uh, implement the tool within uh, two months where uh, from the start we say okay now we can start developing it towards say we have it really in uh, in place so the final uh, design uh, settings the testing of the solution and also having the first launch price was all done in two, uh, within two months so it was really quick yeah and maybe also good to note for people listening at the two months for new clients that would actually be a bit less because the integration that we built it, it can be really leveraged towards other companies as well um so f from at least our integration point of view it would only take around a day um to set it up of course hey, you might have some local testing and so on that you also still want to take care of and that that could take some some more time man. um Okay, thank you for that. So now at the solution, it's been up and running, I think, for uh, since July, if I'm not mistaken, so for a couple of months. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on how it's been performing and which benefits you see, but also are there maybe already some, some parts that you would like to expand or would like to um, yeah, change, so to say? Yeah, the tool is now indeed uh, up and running for a couple of months, and I have to say it's working very, uh, very well. The automation is very user friendly, so there's just a button in SAP which you can use to price the loan, where you put price and then it's uh, then it's priced. We also had last week's the first audit from EY on the um, on the solution, and also there we saw that it worked really, uh, really well because we could identify based on our loans in SAP the related uh, reports in Zanders Insights which provided the underpinning of the of the rates and that provided saved a significant amount of uh, of time by collecting all the previously the Excel files matching it with SAP and then sending it over to the auditor from now just okay we receive a request from the uh, reports that you would like to see we just download them from Sanders Insight and we uh, provided them to the to the auditor uh, so that was really uh, really good um, we're also uh, yeah given the fact that we see the see the benefits we're now looking if we can also create a similar setup for our the pricing of our in-house bank uh, in-house bank interest rates with a similar kind of setup for the loans so using Zanders Insight uh, to price the uh, interest rates on uh, our in-house bank positions and using SAP Zanders Insight automation uh, to have the rates loaded automatically but that's currently in uh, in progress yeah exactly so maybe good for the for the audience that one and I, I think i also saw the comment coming by or a question coming by on that so at the moment and what i also explained that the integration is really with sap trm um, but we are looking to integrate as well with the in-house cash module um, right now um, so that would also enable the arms length rates to be pulled in into that one um, you refer to uh, having the uh, transfer pricing reports in handy now, uh, but of course, uh, transfer pricing comes with a lot of uh, compliance burden, so to say, um, and paperwork. Did you have to make any updates to your TP policies or to other processes uh, when you start or when you yeah started working with uh, with our uh, methodology, or was that rather easy? No, the transfer bars pricing policy in itself did not uh, did not change so the way we treat our entities um, in the transfer pricing say setup remained as uh, as is uh, but we changed say the content on how we would uh, calculate the interest rates on our intercompany loans um, so we just took out that element and replaced there the manual calculation with the calculation in Zanders, uh, in Zanders Insight. Um, and that combined with the automation was giving us the benefit. Yeah, in general, I think it's always good to keep your policies 
a little bit vague, so to say, because that indeed enables you to make some changes uh, in methodology, um, whereby you don't have to make a lot of changes to, to the policy documents as well then. Um. Uh, so maybe last one, uh, because we're running out of time. Um, do you have any tips eh, for other corporate treasurers uh, which are struggling maybe eh, with the compliance burden, um, specifically then eh, for, for transfer pricing for financial transactions? Yes, I think uh, my biggest tip would be every company need to be compliant with the rules and uh, regulations and you just you can't avoid the burden of the compliance in this case but you can make sure that you deliver the information in an efficient uh, way and as much automated as uh, as possible and i think zanders inside is a great tool in that respect to support you in making it efficient and have Having the information as soon and as easy as possible uh, available both for your auditor and for your tax auditors. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much for that then. Um, and I think this is a good way to round it out. Um, I do see there are some, still some uh, questions standing open. We're a bit over time already, so um, for the people who asked the question, I will look into them and come back uh, on them via email. Maybe also good to note that you can download a handout uh, from the platform with some more information on the solutions methodologies and also our contact details. Um, and you're also able to rewatch all of the webinars um, that were the part one and part two of the series. Uh, so please reach, please reach out if, if you would still uh, want some information on that. And thank you very much for dialing in.